Don't get me started. Don't get me started. Oh, shut your mouth. Touchdown, Jeremy. I can never get my hands in the screen. <laughs> I'm surprised that I managed to do it, frankly. <laughs> it's here. It's again. It's not Sunday, though. Is that confused you? It very much confused me. Yeah. 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 And other people, probably. But look, like... Jeremy, how swanky this, this whole setup looks like. I know. I really love your, your microphone, like sat there protruding into your face. It looks epic. It looks phallic, <laughs> but it looks epic. Yeah, it does. It's stupid, isn't it? It's just so, so mega. But I could actually kind of put it down like that and then see like, anyway, here we are. Covideo Killed a Radio Star, episode eight. Um, and because we're now using a wonderful new um, streaming system, we should be able to go directly into Facebook, which means that you might be just wandering past Facebook, trading through uh, pictures of cats and angry people talking about Black Lives Matter, and you found yeah. us. Thank God you're here. Yeah. I mean, you have the opportunity on Facebook to just get really ang angry at absolutely nothing. And that's basically what this podcast is. So welcome. Welcome to the podcast version of facebook but with slightly more attractive faces <laughs> and uh yes and definitely yeah. less racism 100 percent oh, less racism oh, 100%. than facebook 100 percent. listen um if you've not seen this before we, we've been doing this on youtube and so you'd have to go there to do it but you might have just traveled past us today on whatever your, platforms uh, we're your brother has broadcasting. wandered past he says, wandering ah. past Facebook and found you. So there you go. It is exactly ah. as you described. It's unbelievable. My brother, St thanks very much for wandering past. Um, he keeps wandering past our stuff. Remember, he popped in the other day when we were doing the uh, beer dice on cocktails and bullshit. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's good to see you looking into my house, into uh, the wasteland that is my <laughs> IKEA bookcase thing. Um, I really should put more effort into that. If we get more like 10 viewers, maybe. Um, that would be a good idea. Oh shit! I think my uh, I think I've got fifteen percent battery left. I wonder if that'll last. Well, we'll find out. So, if it you've not been past it before, will not last. So maybe uh, you should use this opportunity to go and get a charger right now. You and explain, I'll, and I'll chat to the people. You tell people, and I'll be back in like ten seconds. <laughs> so Eddie Stone asks, "What is this Friday bullshit cock jars?" Uh, first of all, I love that insult. That's Shakespearean level insult. Um, so uh, Alex is going to be unavailable on Sunday, and so we are bringing it forward to to Friday. And Friday's cool, right? We're not competing against download this week and competing against all other manner of stuff. So yeah, Friday. Sound off if you like Friday. Welcome, Duff Valley. We're just letting Alex plug into his power because uh touchdown we're, we're completely organized on this podcast as you well know and uh <laughs> only the second time is, in eight everything, episodes everything needs to be plugged in and uh yeah great so uh, i was explaining the friday-ness but i was being a bit it's vague friday. about 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 where you were not why you were not there so if you want to share share if you don't don't yeah well I mean, I'm going to go to Belgium on Sunday, so I can't do the Sunday show on a Sunday. It had to be a Friday show. But as you said, Jeremy, when it becomes the NFL season, we won't be able to do this on a Sunday. Absolutely. We need a more There's no, no chance in hell of me, as much as I love you, I'm not doing, doing this instead of watching my Bears lose. It's no chance happen. in hell. And I wouldn't watch it. I wouldn't do this instead of watching the Brady and Gronk show in Tampa winning. So, you know, um, no chance in hell, um, <laughs> as, uh, as was once sung by somebody for Vince McMahon. But yeah, here we are. Co-video killed the radio star episode eight. So much to talk about. We like to talk about everything to keep you going um, in these terrible lockdown times. My mega microphone um, and my bottle of wine. It saddens me probably to think, look, by the way, this is Dark Horse. And if you look carefully, the horse is kind of white bit on its head. It's just a wine glass. Somebody in Dark Horse, California went, 
how about a wine glass on the logo? And they were like, oh my God, it's like he knows. Um, I Whoever that person is think... probably did not get enough credit <laughs> or money for that because that is just an inspired idea. I love that so much. By the way, right, there's um, I one, I'll say that this is probably the second time Stephen has turned up and I'm like drinking on a, on a show. All my shows are about drinking and swearing. It's like he doesn't know me. Um, but there's a guy, there's a, a, a ribs chain, a, like a, a rack of ribs chain in, in Belgium called Amadeus. And you just get all you can eat ribs, right? And that is basically everything. Uh, that you only go there for, for ribs. You go there and they, what, and what would you like off the menu? You're like, all you can eat, all you can eat ribs. And you can get all you can drink wine. Okay. So they just bring in like a bottle of wine, which is the equivalent of like three bottles. Oh, yeah. Bonk. And, and you just keep filling up your glass. And at the end, they just basically weigh it and they work out how much you've had. So you've got all you can rib and all you can wine. And I'm like, fuck me. Why, why do they care how much you've had if it's all you can wine? Well, why, uh, why do they do that? Or is it just no, a gimmick wait, wait, wait. To, so that you know? It, it isn't all you can wine. Well, it isn't all you can wine in this. Every pub is all you can wine. But yeah, <laughs> it isn't all you can wine. It is It is weighted, so it isn't. But it does feel very much like I could just go, I won't have to bother them again. The first time I saw it, Jeremy, they brought it out and the little tiny glass. And I said, actually, I asked for a large. And he's supposed like, uh, you can drink as much as you want. And I'm like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> um, but like, here's the point, right? Uh, talking about logos on wine. So they had an like an intern, this young lad who came and did work experience or whatever for them in their place. And because it's Amadeus, there's like a Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart kind of theme. So they said, how about you put like a rack of ribs in one hand and a glass of wine in another, and we dress you up with a powdered, a powdered white wig and a kind of a spot and a white face and a kind of, a you know, that kind of Renaissance look. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and we'll just yeah. have you like, like this, so they took a photo and they said, "We'll just use it for one of the posters." And like that was him, right? I didn't get paid for that. He was a, or he was um, uh, like a work experience guy. And now that's that's on every that's wine thing. bottle. <laughs> yeah, it's on every wine bottle, every poster, every shop, every franchise. And he's like, I bet that the... happens so much <laughs> in so many different places. Like it's so the little funny. guy just gets screwed every time and doesn't get the money like, they deserve. Would you mind dressing up as Mozart? And the guy's like, sure, whatever. It's like, hold this wine, hold these ribs, click. Um, Your likeness then is now everywhere. <laughs> if you go to, if you get a chance to go to Amadeus, do. But you're going to see that guy, and you'll remember this. Um, I'll just point. I'll just point and laugh. Point and laugh. Oh man, yeah. Well, it's not just your brother joining from the Borton clan. No, uh, there is also a Fee Borton. In the comments. Oh, as well. B. Well, that's you know, that's my brother's wife. That's my sister-in-law. Oh, wow, oh, everyone, <laughs> unbelievable. Um, yeah, I think. Oh, well, it's very nice that you're here, Fee. Um, probably glad that you didn't see me. Uh, you know, last time because we we're drinking, and Hannah, uh, who's the their daughter and my niece, was on watching me teach them how to drink. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what uncles do, though, right? Is yeah. lead their lead their nephew and niece down the alcoholic route i'm sure my brother would have done it himself if he could get away with it um hey but there you go let's see if some of your family will join us <laughs> Come along. who knows who knows uh, who who knows shall we do jeremy the segment we like to call covidiot of the week because i know we, that you've got something we absolutely shall let me just make sure i'm on the right uh tab first right so this COVID of the week is a very specific COVID of the week, but is systemic of so many people at the moment, especially stateside, who, much in the same vein as the anti vaxxers, just are completely unwilling to listen to the science and are just bullheadedly doing their own thing because they're dickheads. And I'm talking about people who absolutely refuse to wear masks in response yeah. to the to the coronavirus and just refuse to believe that the coronavirus is actually a thing and that that the mask is going to help them but specifically this woman yes a north carolina woman 
who this week attempted to start a burn your mask challenge <laughs> because you know as we as we discussed on our premiere challenge. episode of this you know a challenge <laughs> is all the rage right and everyone loves to do challenges like an like the ice stuff. bucket challenge jeremy yeah well this is the like dickhead challenge i think uh, <laughs> burn hey, your mask there's a lot of challenge. winners out there but uh, this is on the God website, which I didn't know was a thing until today. Um, so that's that's something as well. Uh, okay. And so this woman started a video, and I can play the video, but I don't think we're going to get the sound through the stream. She uh, decided to try and rally her troops to burn their masks. But is she burning in a frying pan? Yeah, I, I'm more intrigued about how she's actually achieving the burning, to be honest. That's what I'm most interested in. Well, surely she's just put, like, paraffin or something and set it alight and just needs a metal thing. But, like, I see she didn't decide to burn it on her face. No, she's doing. that would have been that would have much, been much better. Much more suitable. I will not comply, she says. <laughs> All right, woman, can we get to the point? Just get to the burning, the fire. Oh, my God. It's not a challenge. This mask is not a respirator and is intended I mean, She's reading the box it. now. <laughs> I can see. Reading the box. What is the box of? A box of masks? Yes. But does not eliminate the risk of contracting any virus, disease, or infection. So, you heard that. This does oh my not God. prevent the spread of... Like, they won't burn the flag, but they'll burn some masks. Priorities, people. Or your, how much you care for any other human being. This is a sign of control. This is not a sign of your compassion or how much you care for another human being. This is a sign of control. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, we're trying to control the virus. Fuck with. I'm going to say loud and clear, I do not comply. I will not comply. I do not consent. Burn your mask challenge. Burn your mask. Now here's some fire safety. I've got my mask that's been nominated to be burned in a frying pan. I'm going to handle it with... I've got my mask that's nominated to be burned. Nominated? Apparently so, yeah. She's tagged it in in her Facebook comments, obviously. Don't do this inside your house. At mask. And it's going to be big. Please don't do this inside your house. Oh, well, she's sensible. At all. <laughs> Burn your mask oh if you like freedom. So here we go. Oh my god. All she Hashtag needs tag ignite freedom. Oh Jesus. That would be All she needs now it wasn't so fucking stupid. Woo! All she here needs now is a ah. make America there great go, again. <laughs> uh hat. God stinks. Oh mate. Yeah, it's like a chemical plastic. Yeah. Oh. And these masks are made in China. Oh no. Oh god. Makes my COVID idiot look tame. Probably just ruined my pan. With all the junk that's in it. Oh, and these masks are made in China. Yeah, like that makes a difference. You stupid. <laughs> that's oh, so she's racist that. as well. So she's racist as well. <laughs> well, you know, hey, the trifecta, you know, all of these sort of terrible things. And, you know. We um, should come up with a uh, a COVID killed the radio star, COVID idiot bingo. For people to oh, just yeah. play as they're roaming the internet, so it's you know, dickhead doesn't want to wear a yeah, mask. Yeah, that's it. Uh, uh, one of those masks is getting away, mate. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Yeah. So if you haven't watched this before, we do a COVID idiot of the week. She is properly a COVID idiot. Um, Massive. There are many out there, um, some of whom wish to wear a mask, but then they cut a hole in the mask. So, like, because it's hard to breathe in them. <laughs> like, yep. Um, <laughs> Wow, unbelievable. But a, a ritualistic mask burning, Jeremy. Yes. I really don't have anything more to say about it. I, of all I, of the hey, COVID listen. idiots we've done, that one has completely dumbfounded me a little. Because. I what? mean, the best one was the one where the woman was wearing them over her parts, as it were. Yeah. Her art. Yeah. Her, like, she was doing it as art. Um, Hashtag and artivism. Worst, and obviously, the. The, the worst guy was Dominic Cummings, I think, for, for sheer idiocy. I don't think... If this were a league table, Jeremy, maybe we could make one and we could put them up. Like, I don't think she hits, like, 
I mean, I don't think she'd in champion league position if ever there was that situation. I think. I mean, not to you know, uh, bring in another COVID yet that the, the A, you may be doing, and B, may come up I'm again, not. but uh, Matt Hancock may have completely topped Dominic Cummings this week in. No, the, what? In really? The, <clears throat> pardon me. Yeah, in the development of this track and trace app where they right. they've they worked on it apparently i mean he's it's jobs for the boys he's given the contract out to to one of his mates rather than anybody competent like ah uh, i uh, see classic apple, classic nepotism both apple and google turned around and said we can produce this in a matter of days and have it like we'll even collaborate on it that's how like serious we are about getting this shit done uh, nice. and you know the uk government like, no no it's okay we've we've got um our buddy Dave on we, it. It'll be fine. We got our guy. <laughs> and so they longer. released they released the Apple iStore app. Um, and then were dumbfounded when people told them that that would not be compatible with Android and that they were missing a large portion of the country. Like a cut of yeah, <laughs> like, what, people what, like you what, and me. What do you mean it doesn't work on Android? Like we we made it for iPhone. Like, yeah. What is yeah. Android? <laughs> Like these Beep people boop. are just so out of touch. Oh my! Oh God, yeah, that's true. Uh, Duff, Duff Valley is coming. We've got a, a whole plethora of COVID idiots this week. Duff Valley says Trump was pretty spectacular in stating if we don't do any tests, our numbers would be so much better. <laughs> that's like saying you know school school testing would be so much better if there were no students. You know, yeah. we no we, failures. If we only test the clever kids, then everybody will pass. Then 100%. You know, yeah. if we don't test anybody with the virus, nobody dies. It's um, genius when you think about it. We need that. We need that meme. Yeah. That, well, um, stay tuned because you, you better bet there's going to be a whole lot more memes in this show now that uh, oh, I'm yeah. in now full that... control. I love it. By the way, my covid idiot of this week which happened today when i went to asda i mean he seemed like by the way a really helpful and nice guy and it only it was only a brief moment of covid right but like i went to buy a hair dryer um which is not a product that anyone would imagine me having any necessity for because when i wash my hair it dries like before i've left the shower but um i i need to defrost my my freezer so i need to kind of gently waft it in front of it to kind of encourage it to melt because it's very resistant to melting at the moment mainly because i've still got it plugged in uh but uh uh <laughs> so i went to buy it and i saw a guy in asda and he was wearing an asda shirt and i know he's the guy i need to talk to he's in the aisle so i walk past him i give him two meters i give him four meters and i turn around and say to him hey do you sell hair dryers and he starts walking towards. He says, "Yes." He says, "Stan walks in towards me." He says, "Yes, I do." Let me tell you. And I start walking further away, right? So I'm like walking back, and he's like, because I'm walking further away from him, it- and I'm, but I'm, I'm trying. He's like, doesn't understand. So he walks slow. He's like, "Let me tell you where they are," and I'm like, oh, "Okay." And I'm just like, <laughs> it's a bit like, in, is it a salsa where you kind of, you kind of like mimic the kind of like you walk back as yeah. she walks forward and it was like that and i was thinking, he's looking at me like why is this guy getting further away by the way other members of staff had a you must ex- you must keep two meters away and i'm like he's walking up like normal non-covid distance i'm like i didn't say the words do you know what the fuck you're doing mate what the <laughs> fuck do you think what are you doing like i i just think people have forgotten that this is a thing. So I'm, with, I'm, and I'm just like, there's a, there's a thing apparently that George Clooney does is he never gets into a conversation with people. He's always moving, right? That's how George Clooney doesn't get stuck in a conversation. He shakes hands, but he's always on the move to some somewhere else. He's never stay stay still. And that's what I was like in Asda today. I was like, okay, that sounds great. So I'm just gonna, you know, and he was like not getting it at all. So. He was, he so where are the, he hair, where are the hair dryers? Over there. Okay, great. I'll do well, a lap okay, and come back around. Thanks very much. <laughs> I'll see you later. It's unbelievable. Um, I'll just reach my hand out, grab a hair dryer. Shit, I've missed. All right, I'll get it on the next lap. 
<laughs> get it, get it, get it when it comes past again. Today, I was walking back into my house, having picked up my car, and um, a guy who was an Amazon, uh, like a parcel deliverer. What is the word? Like, I want to sort of say postman, but you know, a delivery guy was yeah. coming out of my house down the path towards me. And he was making, it was just like walking towards me with the intention that we would just pass like this far apart. And I, so I went and I jumped, I didn't jump. I like moved swiftly onto my own garden. I went, I'll just give you, and I said, I'll just give you some space here, shall I? And he was like, oh yeah, all right. Yeah, I like, suppose, it does, yeah. It does not occur. It does not occur to them that, yeah. that this is a thing. I'm like, See, I get a lot of deliveries as you can appreciate. Running I can. A, you know, buying and selling business and i have like several degrees of delivery personness like mm-hmm. some will knock on my door and then like put the the parcel on the doorstep and then step all the way back to the gate and just wait for me to answer and go this parcel mate like, yeah right cheers <laughs> mate. So that, that's the way you do that good and then good. there are some who like put it down on the doorstep and knock on the door face. and they just stand there i'm like yeah, I, I kind of need to. Once I open my door, this this bubble is That's... fucked. Yeah, that we're, yeah. we're already under this two meters thing. So that there's you shouting through the letterbox. <laughs> Go away. And then, and then there are some takeaway delivery people who are like even worse. Like literally, you open the door and they thrust the food into your face as if that's going to get you to take it quicker, and they won't be in your. <laughs> They're eating space. your pizza. I, I just don't know what some people are thinking, but you're right. I think there is a large portion of the population who have either forgotten that it's a thing or they just don't care anymore or they don't believe it's a thing anymore and they're just um, carrying on regardless like life has gone back to normal. Like, Yeah, but like it the isn't. beautiful sound. It isn't. It Do you know, isn't. I, was driving, I was driving through town today and loads of people just walking around next to each other. Like they're happy. Kids, kids have been doing it for ages. All the kids, it's like, it's almost like it's a science fiction show where the kids aren't affected, so they get to do what they want. That's what it feels like to me because they're all just walking. Kids have been like, yeah, I don't give a fuck. Like it's the I mean, kids that are going to kill us. They're the ones that are, they're going back to school and being in rooms with several other people from several other different households, and they're not as likely to get it, sure, but they can equally spread it back to Nan at home or whoever. Oh, you better believe it. You better believe it. But, um, but yeah. that's enough doom and gloom. Shall we uh, yes! move straight into this is happening? Because there's a lot happening as far as I'm this concerned. This is oh, so much happening. There's so much happening. This is happening, telling you what is hap and what is nap in the world today, in our world anyway. Uh, hmm. Comment along if you want. If you've got something that's hap, tell us what's happening in your world. Um, what's hap for you, Jeremy? Well, my hap is is very much a a shared like hap of what's been happening in like our world, because yes. uh, tw- twice this week uh, we have appropriately social distanced and used the new rules where you can be in a garden six feet apart to oh yes you know hang out and do cool shit in in some gardens. And we did uh, cocktails and bullshit on Saturday this past weekend. What a wonderful which, night that was. Which was a lot of fun. And then uh, this past Wednesday night, uh, you came over and we hung out in my garden. I brought my television outside. <laughs> we yeah. plugged, in my, plugged in my television to the wall, literally. <laughs> and uh, we watched The Masked Singer. The, we watched The Masked Singer. What a show. The American the third Singer. season. Oh, me too, man. Me too. Okay. And like, what was lovely is you had a little, little table... And you and Keris sat over one side. I saw there were two chairs together and one chair on its own. And I correctly worked out that the one chair on its own was for me. So you went so... and sat on the television. <laughs> I laid across the entire thing like a chaise long. Like, a, I'm ready for my close-up now. Um, you're like, get the fuck out. Seriously. <laughs> um, yeah, that was wonderful. I mean, by the way, right, Jeremy, how I feel about this is as we gradually me and you, I say by we, as we Mm. gradually obey the rules. You know that people have been doing this for fucking weeks, right? That everyone's like, oh, well, the garden's all right. I mean, they haven't told me, but the garden's probably all right. I mean, the state of the country is such that people think, 
I'm not going to go on about it, but there are people in the in the country at the moment that think some very, very inexcusable, despi despicable stuff is fine. For these people, a garden was okay probably months ago, you know. But yeah, least... well, for these people, like each other's living rooms and just general <laughs> as life was They're before all the a... coronavirus has been fine. Yeah, but yeah. you know, we sticklers to the rules and you know obeying waited until yeah, well... the garden was permissible. Worked very hard to seat us like two meters yep. apart <clears throat> and yeah I, I dig it i think i'm very keen to speaking of things that you know the coronavirus has done for us very keen to use the garden a bit more to watch television because why not it's a it's a room a room an area of it's, my house hey. that i could be using to watch television that i am currently not and i like watching well, television now when the smoking ban came in, right, people can't mm -hmm. smoke indoors. So when we went to play live action role play, it meant people couldn't smoke in the tent, right? Because a tent was it's also indoor space. indoors. Yeah. Now that pissed off a lot of people at live action role play who wanted to smoke or smoke a pipe because they were quite, in, they quite enjoyed that. And they presumed that that would be a loophole because there's always somebody presumes something. And so then they went, well, if there's, this amount of sides on it, you can kind of smoke as long as it's this. So people are saying, as long as there's one free open side, surely that like a tarpauling over the top to prevent the rain coming in isn't really an, yeah, it is because it's a tent. But the point I'm trying to make, I guess, is that people will think, well, hang on a minute, a garden is fine, but the living room is not. So if we put a little gazebo roof on the garden, I mean, there's no rain coming in on that one, Jeremy. Oh, is that a yeah. loophole? In, or is that cool? Is that half or is that nap? I think you've got to think about that thing. Because had we had you had a mega umbrella, we could all sit under. Yeah, Bring I your mean, own I, umbrella. Did, I did have a mega umbrella. And um, as it reached kind of the later end of the night, it did start to rain and we had to hmm. abandon plan. Not for yes, us, because we, we were fine, but because. I don't think a television really stands up to the rain very well, if I'm <laughs> honest. But do you know what? Mike? If we had a free, if we had a television, we didn't <clears> care about, right? How would it be? Is see how long it lasted in the rain? Is that no, dangerous? I've, I've nailed it. I've nailed it. I'm get, I'm going to buy okay. a projector. Oh, oh, and and because you, you can just put a little a little like cover over that so that that doesn't get wet, and you project that onto the wall. Bosh. That's your answer, guys. I hope you're hearing this. So when are we going to get the, I would like the summer season of screened uh, Jeremy's Garden film season. That's what mm. I want. I want you to pick like 10 films that are going to be displayed in your garden over this season. That would be wonderful. And you <laughs> my, can all My mother-in-law is uh, pointing out that there is a gazebo in my attic. It's hers. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Kay. And also, Kay is, uh, has also done an outdoor cinema, so she knows all about this. Uh, mm. She's the person to go to, right? She knows everything about this. Very glad you're watching, by the way, Kay. Um, uh, Duff Valley has come in with his hap of the week. Oh, uh, tell and, us! And actually, um, it's a perfect segue into your naps, perhaps. Um, his camper van is finally up and running again. Touchdown! Yeah. Love camper vans. Camper hey. vans are definitely hap. I'm just going to oh, throw are. that out straight away. Camper vans are hap. Do you know what? When it's still locked down, right, and you're searching for a holiday that you want to do with your significant other, why don't you get a camper van and then just drive drive around the entire of the like the Scottish coast? I saw it come up in my feed, like or any coast, I guess, or any place. Yeah, or I saw that. Yeah, that's but a like, thing. Right, just drive around. It's just you and the person you're allowed to be with in a van no one's near you exploring the countryside go and get it done um hey duff valley if it is your real name i hope it is um i think that's a great hat you should be the first person to go and drive the kind of uh, two thousand kilometers around this i don't know how big things are uh around wherever who knows but you're right um that's my nap do you know what's nap what's nap jeremy is my fucking car just because i've got to go to belgium I went and tried to get, <laughs> went to try and get it fixed. This is nothing to do with the person that's fixing it, who's wonderful. But it did just seem like it never rains, but it pours on my fucking car, um, or on televisions, so yeah. <laughs> or on televisions in the garden. Yeah, um, yeah. I had to go and 
oh my god i took it in because it had to get it fixed the the kind of tracking when i brought it back i'm like hooray it's done the next day i tried to drive it and the it just broke and it kept shouting at me the the brake the parking brake is on the parking brake is it wasn't physically shouting it It, it's not that advanced that would be great just had a screw (laughs) the parking what's wrong with you the parking brakes the parking brake beep boop that but like you my car has drive (laughs) take a bus do not drive cretin (laughs) it's an electronic parking brake so it automatically puts it on Mm. when i stop so everybody's everyone has a handbrake right but if you don't have a a physical one and you have one that's like electronic it just goes on so it, as i get into my car it says the car is automatically stopped i'm like i know car that, that you don't have to tell me that that's a bit like saying the car has wheels but I, I know these things are automatically present why so i had to call the same guys out let's come pick it up for more money and then they had to fix that again and i'm going to belgium on sunday i couldn't risk it and they're like well it needs a service next time and i'm like no i'm not risking this get it done now so they <laughs> oh my god so yeah what's nap fucking cars man they're all yeah. wonderful until they're not terrible but i'm yeah, very pleased that bally's car is okay and uh, in a in a similar way i discovered when i went out to do my weekly shop the other day that there is a gigantic crack in my windscreen and shit now i've got to get the whole thing replaced because you can't you know, do that cool ass gel stuff on a huge crack. You've got to, have no. to replace the whole thing. How big thing. is the crack? Uh, it's a good kind of six inches, six to eight inches. Oh, oh my yeah. God, really? Hey, yep. on my old car, on my old KA, like I was on the motorway and a little bit of grit flicked up and it hit the windscreen and it didn't crack it, but it chipped it and had a tiny little chip. Yeah that basically scraped a little bit of the surface out of it, but didn't go any further. And I was like, oh, bollocks. Because if you look at those adverts, like a chip can become a, like a, like a longer crack. or whatever, you know, a crack. Yeah, yeah. A chip can become a crack. A and I think that's exactly wind- what has happened with my car. <laughs> and because I was- the, the, where it is, it's like right up behind the, the wing mirror. So it was obscured, and I didn't know it was there, obviously. And I've just driven around and bounced over our shitty roads in this country, and it's got worse. Oh, you worse. better believe it, and especially in Folkestone. Yeah, I mean, by the way, I ran my luck. I was just like, nah, not having it. Having it. So I just honestly, for the next two years, just kept driving. Oh, yeah, it's fine. Seems okay. It hasn't got any worse. I <laughs> just like terribly just like running my luck. But the other thing that's uh, – what have I got this hat? Did I get any hat? I don't think I put in a hat. I haven't got a single hat. I agree with your hats. Did I only put yeah. maps in? You did oh, only put man. maps in. Oh, oh, shit. Shit. Sorry, guys. Um, what ne- is hat? Negative well, Nancy over here. <laughs> no, I love the time we spent together. We've Debbie only just Downer. begun. <laughs> oh, no. Here's the good thing. Happy. Oh, I do have a hat. Fighting the man. Right? So here's the thing. I can't show you because my phone is actually recording me. But... I bought a really super fucking expensive um, screen protector because the Galaxy S10 has an ultrasonic reader. When you put your thumb on it, it reads it from, a, you know, it can't have any distance between it. So you can't have, you need to be as close, your thumb needs to be as close to it as possible. So they have a, they sell you, they say like in order to have tempered glass, tempered glass is too thick. So you can't have tempered glass and an S10 and t- unless they sell you, a 40 pound screen protector. Now, I don't know if you've bought a screen protector in your life, Jeremy. Maybe you need I, one for your windscreen, like a massive one that goes over. Yeah, the I haven't, but I am familiar with the. Hey, you haven't? The, the, I haven't, no. What? I, I, I tell you what, I don't break phones. It is, it is a thing. Shut your it mouth. Has I never love we're doing this. Right? God so, damn it. So everyone around me is out there breaking phones, and I'm like, I don't break phones. It is not a that's thing. such. And I... like, like I've got a cover for mine because I drop it. Yeah, and, sure, a cover and is the, fine. And the S9 is notoriously fragile, so I'm like, okay, well, maybe I well, I want to you know keep my uh, no broken phone since '93 streak and uh, <laughs> and protect it a little bit. But while everyone around me is breaking phones and all that kind of bullshit 
my phones are completely fine. The the only phone of mine that has been broken in my life was broken by my wife. I didn't break it. <laughs> and then I also a... gave her my old phone. Um and it she fell out of a car. One. Well, she tried. It fell out of a car outside Tesco. <laughs> it got run over several times. Like we were like, "Where's your phone?" By other like, people. I don't, know. I don't know where my phone is. I'm like, "Oh, like better go back and look." I bet, for it. I bet it fell out of the car, like outside Tesco. We go and look for it. It's pouring down with rain. Find the phone, like the the little bit of glass over the the camera lens on the back is broken. Everything else is fine. <laughs> Take it home, try it. Motorola Droid, that thing was indestructible. <laughs> Do you know, like... Amber I Ashton says, every... I've never broken a phone in my life. Nokia's who said virtually... That? Uh, Amber Ashton. I don't know virtually who Amber is, indestructible. But... Nokia's, what is it? Into... What, Motorola says. Nokia's? Oh, well, mm. I mean, remember the Nokia's, the 3310, 3310. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, those... Yeah. those were fucking bricks. Yeah, good luck, like, breaking them. I'll be honest. I'm fine with that but as things progressed especially to smartphones with all that screen real estate do you know what was back in the day when we all got mobile phones they offered us insurance now i'm not a big fan of taking insurance with anything because they said do you want to insure? no i don't right um and everyone's like well you better take insurance with your mobile phone and i'm like yeah but over time all the months of insurance that i've saved are money i've saved that i could spend on a new like, phone I'm, when i break it on a new yeah exactly mm. i'm up on the deal like if you added it all up, I never ever broke a phone. I'm so super careful with my phone. But when I started to buy really good phones, I'm like, I might be a non-fumbly motherfucker. Something you need to know about uh, Mr. Perry uh, from Cocktails and Bullshit is that he is clumsy of hand, but uh, dexterous of foot. So like he's the kind of guy that needs a screen protector. But when I started getting really serious, expensive phones, yeah, you better believe I put one on all the time. And I never dropped them. Right, here's the thing, Jeremy. I never dropped them. I bought a case that was like apparently military grade, like they all are. And I put my military grade thing around it. I put my tempered glass thing over. This is my SE, my iPhone SE. And it was beautiful. I'm look looking at it. Uh, and I put it on there. And I'm like, but I never dropped them. I'm just like you, Jeremy. I never dropped them. I'm supremely careful with them. And by the way, I'll ask you this. Do you ever put your phone in the same pocket as your keys? Because that's no. a... Right. Because that is taking you on a hiding to nothing. But I don't do that either. And then one My time, my pocket was... is mobile phone exclusive. Deal one of the. You're like Matt. You're just like a different Matt. You're like put all my stuff in all the same pockets. Oh, I hate you guys. Um, yeah. I um. So I've done all that stuff with my my military grade case, my military grade tempered glass. Everything's beautiful, but it doesn't matter because I never drop a phone. And then I came out of McDonald's at Clackett Lane. And I, I took my phone out of my pocket to look at it, to read it, because I can't stay away from it. And as I did it, it kind of caught on the edge of my jeans pocket. It didn't come out of my pocket clean. It never got to this point. It came out of that, and it kind of like caught on this. And my hand got to this level with my eyes. No phone. The phone clips off my pocket. It pinwheels. I try to catch it. It tips off my fingertips. It spins down. And it cuts towards level with my foot as my foot is walking naturally forwards. And I boot my fucking phone all the way along the car park. And it runs along. And, it... and I'm like... Oh. But thankfully, Captain Tempered Blast and the military grade protector patrol saved my phone. Just saying. So even the coolest and cleverest, smartest and modest of people... <laughs> Need a screen protector, Jeremy. I can't wait for you to break your phone. I will laugh so hard at you. I'd say, I promise. Yeah, you laugh at me. I'm fine. I will deserve I will. it at that point. Yeah, you I will. will. Absolutely deserve it. Oh, no screen protector. No. Nope. All I'll say, just quickly, because I know this is gone a bit, right? Is that I bought that screen protector, and the way you have to do it is you have to, you have to, it's like you have to put a little bridge over the top of your, your phone goes in a little socket plastic socket and then you unscrew the glue the glue dribbles onto the screen into a blob and then you set up your screen protector on top kind of it of squeeze it out don't you you have to yeah it actually just drops onto it and then when it's done okay. you discard that it's like a surgical procedure you take the bridge off and the glue 
stick off. Now you've just got a phone with a blob of glue. And then you set your screen protector above it. And it's supported by a little pin, which you pull out to drop the screen onto it. And then the glue starts to do it. And you tip the This is why I don't have a screen phone. protector, man. This, the tip, this is... yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. I've never done anything like it. Normally, you just put the thing on there. But it's so precise. How, long, See, then you... how many years did this degree take you to, to pass? <laughs> Phone protect. Honestly, you tip the did thing. Did you do it and it open makes university glue. or? I, <laughs> I did. I did. A phone screen protecting. I've got a BA in it, uh, the third, but you know, it's a pass. But I mean, you know, um, and that's how I did it. And by the way, at the end of it all, it didn't fucking work. So I had to go back to Amazon uh, the other day. And this is the bit I want to say that's hap. I don't know why I got to this. But anyway, I went back to Amazon and I said, yeah. Your fucking sc- I didn't do this. I don't know why. Yeah, your fucking screen protector didn't work, and they were like, "Okay, well, if you send it back to us," and I was like, "Send it back? It didn't work. It's a bit of broken plastic. I did what anyone would do. I threw it the fuck away." And they were like, "Oh, well, I mean, what proof do we have that it doesn't work?" And I'm like, "It's in the fucking bin. That's the proof. What do you want from me? I didn't leave it on. What am I going to do? Send it back? It'll just, you'll be like, oh, yeah, that's plastic. That didn't work. You said, why, why, why? But um, they said, do you take a photo of it? And I said, yes. And I sent it to them. Because of COVID, no one's manning that email. So I just went, no one's manning the email. And they went, well, okay, we're just going to refund you anyway. But watch out for next time. And I was like, so fuck you, Amazon. And PS, thank you, because I got my money back from my stupid screen protector. So one nil to Jeremy. That's money that I, you wouldn't have even spent in the first place. Yeah, but I'm happy because I damn damn the man, money back in my pocket. Yeah, fuck you, Bezos. <laughs> Pay some tax, you prick. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, do that. Do that. Oh, I feel like well, I'm I, getting my money back. I I have one nap, and it's only nap for me, really. It's not really nap for the majority of people, especially in this country in which we live. And yeah, it's more a lament that. Alex, the Premier League is back. Guess who's back? Back again. Uh, but people love the Premier League, Jeremy. Aren't you one of those people? No, no. I like literally any other sport but that. <laughs> and none of that is back. Oh, I suppose I could watch NASCAR if I want, but like... No. I don't know why you'd want to watch that. I, I would watch NASCAR 100 times more than I would watch like the Premier League. Let's get that right. But... I'll tell you something. Why is the Premier on. League back? But like any other sport that I would have a vague passing interest in is somehow arguing about what is appropriate procedure. I'm like the procedure's very easy. You test everyone on the way in. If they've got coronavirus, get rid of them. If they don't, they can play. Rinse, repeat, no crowd. Easy. Whilst hey, listen, I'll tell you why, right? Because whilst it's not just the domain of hooligans and racists, there are a lot of them that do watch the Premiership and they need them to stop defending statues pointlessly and start going, staying in their homes. Oh, it's you a know, distraction that's what, it's, technique. It's I a see. distraction. You ever never seen that thing where like all these people are rebelling and then they chuck a football in and everyone just ignores it? That's what it's like. It's like, go back to your homes, go back to your Sky Sports, stop Can't doing this. Can't drink beer that's in front of a Churchill statue if I'm watching the Arsenal. Right? It's a hard mm. thing for these people. And uh, by the way, for the sake of a joke, this was, but there's obviously a lot of people that like it and they're fine. But for the sake of a joke, yeah, that's what's happening. They're all going back home. It's like, well, yeah, can't watch Millwall from, from outside because can't, although they probably are in a pub somewhere. Um, by the way, I mean, you don't know the answer to this question, but like, is this the new, what, what, what year is this? What month is this? This is June. Mm. They started the premiership again. It starts in August. Is this last year's season still continuing? Or what? It's, it's the 1920 season, yeah. It was, obviously, it was supposed to finish in May. Ah, because but, I was wondering about but they've this. they've because... lost these last few months. And yeah, right. they, they have, a, I think they have slightly abridged the season and they are playing more regularly than they would have ordinarily. Like there's hey, been a hey. game, there's been a game every night that you can watch televised if you so choose. Well, here's the thing. Our good friend Duncan is a Liverpool fan. And a many, like many Liverpool fans, have not seen Liverpool win the league in quite some many fucking years. You know, I thought you were so going to say, like, sh- like most Liverpool fans, have never seen Liverpool play because most <laughs> Liverpool fans, fans don't live in Liverpool and have no association with Liverpool whatsoever. 
do you know what? That, that is also true, although he has seen them play because he was a member of the Kent Reds and he was able to go up and go and watch them. And he went travelled all the way up to Liverpool to watch them do a nil-nil draw and then came back again. But um, Thrilling. Thrilling. You have just Many encapsulated the, the, the football experience. They're nil-nil not all draws like that. and waiting and for someone to do something interesting and it never, I'll ever I'll say happened. that happened in the NFL. Something's always happened in the NFL. Um, so what I say is that Liverpool, Liverpool were like the same amount of points clear at the top that double the people from second to third or something stupid like that. They were so far ahead. I was going to say, w- w- yeah, weren't they uncatchable by the time they were absolutely COVID hit? I mean, it wasn't what a perfect time a to call it quits. Surely, unbelievable. Right here's the thing. Right, I said to Jeremy, I said Jeremy, I said to Duncan before this all happened. Surely you've won it. There's nothing can do it. Like even your incompetence and their brilliance of the nearest team. You're just not mathematically. You need a global it can pandemic to fuck this up. Yeah, hey, unbelievable. Do you know? I said to him, "What is it? How can they fuck it up?" And he went, "They'll fuck it up somehow." I said, "They can't. It's impossible. What could possibly come along?" Like, I does tell you God what, hate do you, Liverpool? Do you want to hear something funny and supporting of this? Go on, go on. I think that I have had the coronavirus, mm-hmm. and I caught it I in know. Liverpool. <laughs> What, when you were doing a Comic Con in Liverpool Liverpool? Yeah. Yeah. When I was like sleeping in my mother in law's camper van, like in the uh Everton car park, because it's empty. <laughs> and it's a great place to just pull up. But what at what point did you remember someone coughing over you and you were like just, like slow motion, like oh new no. COVID. No, it's just like obviously you. you know social distancing was not a thing, and nobody yeah, knew anything about the virus back at the beginning of uh, yeah. yeah. And and Duff Valley points out he was with that. he was with uh, me at one point at that place in Liverpool. Yeah, well, Duff Valley, could... did you get it? Did you get COVID? That's what I, I want to know. I don't think he did get it, but uh, I would be interested to know. But I'm pretty sure I had it because I was pretty dead the weekend after, and what now is known as COVID symptoms, but not at the time. So I just think it's amazing that nope, basically he says they could, he, he did not, he did not. Congratulations. Um, Hey, two for two, Duff, no COVID camper vans fixed. Man, everything's what a time coming to be up. Alive. Duff. Everything's coming up. Duff, get yourself some beer. But I'm sure that's been done before, but I mean, you've got to get that right. You've got to get a lovely can of Duff, just stand there. Profile. Pic. Um, <laughs> Uh, somebody um, on Mixer called Mrs. Grumble's Third has commented, sometimes you need to die to build immunity. <laughs> hey, I listen, absolutely once you're dead... <laughs> cannot argue with you. Can't catch once coronavirus you're dead, if you're, you're dead. To everything. You can't catch it. Can't catch anything. There's no illness that will chase you beyond death. Like, none of them. Like, that's it. Hey, you can't argue with that. Is that Mrs. Who was that? Mrs. Grumble? What Mrs. a great Grumble's name. third, yeah. There are I two no Mrs. Grumbles is, before you. I love it. Can't They'll be, be around again. in a minute for another for another joke that. Please comment us. again. That was great. I love it. That, that's brilliant. You're right, though. Um, that's true. I mean, there's many illnesses the dead don't get. You know, it's like they won't catch it more than once. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I they're do back find again. It what? They're back again. They found yeah. one one thing that will get you when you're dead. And that's necrosis. Necrosis. That's true. I think you might be that's a bit true. too intelligent for this podcast. Not to not to dissuade you from from listening, but uh, you might be a bit too clever for us. Yeah, no, they will. Yeah, necrosis is something that the dead will get and continue to get, but they won't mind so much. You know, they won't mind. They'll be okay with it by that point. I think. Yeah. Hey, if you had a if you had a choice, Duncan. Uh, Duncan, I'm calling you Duncan. If you had a choice, Jeremy. <laughs> Of like, um, because I think it's Jerry. I think it's Duncan. You see, that's um, if you had a choice of like, when you die, you get to come back as like an undead or just dying. Would you come back as like you can as an undead? You can still talk like you do, but you look Mm -hmm. kind of bony and stuff. You know, would you think you could do that? You'd stay alive in an undead form. Just you won't be like brains, brains, zombie brains. I'm just saying you'd be you, but you'd look a bit like the worst. I'm ugly already, so it's not much of a difference, really. (laughs) You're saying I, I can be, ex- 
I can be exactly the same as I am now, but be immortal ostensibly. Yeah, Maybe sign I'm me up. up. Ah, yeah, I like the idea of it. I think everyone, we should all do it. We should all do it. Um, and I get to eat brains. Pop- that's that's all the protein you could ever need. Bit of a population problem, one would imagine, after that. But, you know, people would have a problem. At any rate, I find it amazing, just going back to this Premier League thing, they didn't just crown Liverpool regardless. You go, look, guys. Crown their asses. Guys, do it. It doesn't matter. Move on. COVID hit. They were in the lead. I mean, I don't know what would have happened. I don't care enough. But surely you just go, come on, guys, let's be real. They won the fucking thing. Leave them to it. Don't make it go. Don't drag this fucking shit out. But it looks like they're dragging it out. God, I hope they win. Duncan will be insufferable. Okay. Um, that was what was happening. We managed to spend quite a lot of time on it. It's amazing. I love it. We did. What do you want to do now? Uh, I would really like, Alex, if you would try and read my lips. I can do that. I can do that. Do you want me to take my headphones off? You can. Uh, let's just explain how this segment, Read My Lips, works, first of all. So basically what's going to gonna right happen here. What's going to happen is uh, that Alex is going to take his headphones off so that he cannot hear me. In a minute. Uh, but before, I, before he does, I'm going to give him a category of something that uh, he is going to try and guess what I'm saying. So, for example, if I gave him the category of um, dickheads, uh, I would say Dominic <laughs> Cummings, and he would say <laughs> Dominic Cummings because he read that but from I my lips. Read the lips, yeah. Like Donald Trump. And we, I, by the way, we were really good at this last time, so maybe it's not as hard a game as I thought it was. But hey, there's everything to play for. So, what is the subject you're going to give me? Okay, the subject for today's read my lips is Star Trek characters. Oh, oh, that's much better than mine. Um, <laughs> that's fine. Uh, <laughs> that's fine for me. Okay, so should I take my headphones off? How will I Go know when I, you start? Where well, you'll be moving your lips, right? Uh, well, first of all, I'm going to put a timer on the screen, the minute timer. Oh my god! On the screen, minute. Yeah, I'm okay. doing a minute. I'm going for a minute this okay. time. Okay. Uh, I felt you like can it was join too, if you're watching this. You can all. Time. Oh wait, you can't be able join to hear me. You'll hear you him. can take. You yeah. can take your your sound, mute your TVs or whatever and comment along. But due to the delays, <laughs> you might be helping Alex. I don't know. Do what you want. I don't care. Um, yeah, there will be a timer matter. on the screen, and this if you're so still stupid. if you're still trying to guess after the times run out, I'll just wave at you or something. Oh yeah, cool. Cool. Can I take them out. I take them out. Yeah, okay. I'll take them disrobe. Out. I'm gonna Go put them it. all the way down there. They're all the way on the floor now. Okay. Listen, I'm gonna get really close in. Okay. The I'll Star Trek characters, closer right? for you as well. Oh, I yes. literally can't hear anything. Okay. Benjamin Sisko. Benjamin. It, oh, it, I know what you said. Benjamin Give it Sisko. To me one more t- Benjamin Sisko. Jean Luc Picard. Jean Luc Picard. Do you say Captain Picard? Yeah, that'll do. Seven. <laughs> oh, it's Jean Luc Picard, right? I, I, I only got Picard. Oh, sorry. Right. Go on then. Try next one. Seven of nine. Having a fight, having a fight is what you seven just of nine. <laughs> seven of nine. Neelix. Neelix. He that sounds like you're saying Helen. Neelix. E is you're saying Neelix. Neelix. Fuck Neelix. Don't get me started on Neelix. Guinan. Do that Guinan. one again. Guinan. You said Guinan. And that's time. Is that it? Oh, my God. (laughs) Oh, my God. I still don't know whether this is even vaguely um, entertaining at all. That was quite hard, that one. Let us know if you like that. I don't Uh, know. Eddie Stone says, fucking Neelix. Eddie Stone! Motherfucker! It's good to see you. Um, Yeah, fuck Neelix. No. I mean, I never really watched Voyager, but then Love people Neelix. who watch this n- know that I don't like Voyager, really. But um... anyway, do you want to play this game? I do. I think I'm going to need to mute my headphones because they're quite loud. Uh, there you go. Yeah. The... Mrs. Grumbles the Third says, I haven't finished Voyager yet, but I like Neelix and I'm in season five. Why do so many people hate on Voyager? 
Is that what she said? Why do so, so many people hate on Voyager? Yeah. H- have you um, not watched any other sci-fi shows or any other Star Trek? Oh, shut I up. I mean, I'm not... <laughs> it's, equally, it's equally as good as all the other Star Treks and in some ways much better. Anyway, we're give gonna, me my category so I can uh, no. take off my No, headphones. I want to get into this. Okay. Um... I didn't have a lot of time to think about this. So it's birds. Oh, shit. Okay. But don't worry, it's going to be obvious birds. You ready? Yeah? Hang on, I can hear you. I... So let me just mute my. Ah, oh, shit. All right, now I'm ready. Ah. By the way, Voyage is total shit. Right. Um, ready? Okay. You can't hear me. Voyage is terrible. Don't watch it. Um, okay, here we go. Parrot. Parrot. Okay, got that one. Yes, yes, yes. Hummingbird. Blackbird? Mm, so it's a bird. Um, hummingbird. Mm, hummingbird. Help hummingbird. Bird. <laughs> <laughs> Pass. Oh, amazing. Okay, sure. Penguin. Say again. Penguin. Penguin. Back wing. Penguin. Black one. <laughs> Penguin. Penguin. Squidward. Penguin. Penguin. <laughs> Penguin. It's turned into charades. Woodpecker. Woodpecker. Yes. By the way, I don't know how long you've done. time. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> I was so bad at that. No. Volume. Hummingbird was the best thing ever there. Oh my god, that was awful. Um That was fine. I think that was good. That was good. <laughs> Humming it... Hummingbird. It's just me. If you listen to this back as a podcast, it's just me shouting hummingbird. Hummingbird. Um so that is the game that we like to call Read My Lips. Let us know if you liked it. I, if you didn't, it's okay. Feedback is I all good. I feel like an utter, utter dickhead, so that was probably entertaining to see me say what random point, words. Right? I don't know. You, I don't like getting it right, because that's literally the, not the point of the game. Anyway. Um, but you won. Thanks. You won this time. I, I did. I did. I did. I'm very pleased that I won. Um there is a Star Good. Trek Voyager discussion going on in the comments right now that I'm not going to I, share with you. I know. Uh, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do, but that, do you know what? I don't mind if this becomes that. I have no, I don't really have so much of a problem with it. I just don't think it's as good as the others. Um, and I kind of tend to play it up a little bit just because I know you like it. It's no, it's no Deep Space Nine though, is it? I mean, let's be all be fair. Let's all, let's all be fair, right? It's no Deep Space Nine. It's no Deep Space Nine. What do you I, think about I, that? Do, I like Voyager and DS9 equally. Equally? Yeah. I because mean, I, equally. I, 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 I'm not a huge fan of the early DS9 seasons. I like when it really kicks off and you get into the, the changelings are around and the Dominion War and they really kick into the like religious overtones. But before that, you're getting me into a Star Trek discussion again. <laughs> This is not I mean, a Star like, Trek podcast. Why not? Maybe it should be. We talk about it more than anything else. Let, let's do that as you well. Started... Okay. Duncan would love that. We'll um, get Duncan involved, yeah. We'll get Duncan involved. Okay, no, but sometimes we go with what's given us. Given, given us. Um, what I want to know in the comments is where Amber Ashton has said, new, don't wish that on him, they're expensive. I really don't know what she's talking about. That was the phones. When you wish oh. I would break my phone so you could like, dunk oh, on me. Oh, Amber. Do you know who Amber is? I do. Oh, you know, bless you, Amber. That's so sweet of you to say that. But fuck him because he needs to buy a screen protector. <laughs> I love fuck it. Fuck you too if you haven't got one. Um, uh... <laughs> we're, we're feeling pretty ranty. Should we continue in that vein and get each other started? Or not get each other yeah. started, as the case yeah, may be. Let's... Can you explain Let's Don't Get do... Me Started for our new viewers? So listen, this is a segment called Don't Get Me Started. We pick subjects for the other person to uh, to talk about. But I say I name a subject and then he, and then when it's my turn, I have to say, don't get me started on the subject we've been given. And then we have to explain why it is 
that this subject is total shit, um, even if it's something we like, especially if it's something we like. But I don't know all something the things we like. Yeah, it usually is something we like, but sometimes I just pick random things. Um, I have got one that I know you like. You mentioned it the other day, so okay. Um, I, I'm I'm less so- kind of harsh this week. I'm just interested okay. to see where you go with one of them, and <clears throat> one of them you're going to have fun with. I think so. Listen, in the yeah, in the past, in the past, what's happened is inadvertently we've started to pick things um, that the other to person totally definitely fuck likes. Fuck the other one over, yeah. And it wasn't meant to do it, but it is quite fun. So so be it. I've got one that is just random, and one that is well. Anyway, do you want to go first, or shall I go first? Uh, I'm going to get you started first, if that's all right. Do it. Yeah, go. I've got my wine. I'm ready to go. So on this fine Friday evening, please yeah. enlighten me. How do you feel about eBay? Oh, my God. Don't get me started on eBay. eBay is a pile of shite. I hate eBay so much. By the way, the last two things I bought, I bought something on eBay. I don't even want to say what I bought on eBay because she might be watching. I bought a product on eBay just the other day. Was it a and dildo? for some reason... <laughs> Oh, hey, by the way, I can wouldn't you buy get dildos, dildos on, on eBay. eBay. Can you, you can get anything on eBay. You can get absolutely anything on eBay. Do you know what the worst thing about eBay was in the beginning? Is that no one knew who you were. And I still think to a degree you can get away with just being Alex1235769 and then basically having carte blanche to scam whoever the fuck you want. But the problem with eBay at the moment is that I don't know what it is about it. It just seems like they're totally acceptable to have... Um, Shipping times about two months. And today, right, COVID be damned, they said, if you pay an extra five pounds, we'll definitely send it out today, lol. Have they sent out? Fuck me, have they sent out? Nothing at all. So I haven't got my present at all. What a waste of time eBay is. Everyone's just chasing these eBay numbers. At that point, you know, if you sell enough or buy enough, right, here's the thing. I tried to buy a keyboard. In fact, it was this keyboard. So fuck me, right? Because it's beautiful. And I, the only person I could get it off was Dodgy McGrew. That wasn't his real name. And basically, it was his name was whatever it was. And he had six feedback. And I'm like, oh, no. Six? He's selling the thing that I want. And I bought it off him. And then I heard nothing. That's the problem with eBay. It doesn't seem to fucking track anywhere. So I had to just sit around waiting for it to turn up and hoping beyond hope that it would. Fuck me, it did turn up. Thank God for that. But you're, you're taking your life into your hand with fucking eBay. Fuck eBay. Fuck it, I don't. I don't. Just use Amazon. Oh, God, I can't believe I said that. Yeah, don't <laughs> get me started on eBay. Hard as shit. Use this. Um, do you want me to give you a random... I'm just going to give you something random or something that might really... I don't know. You do what, what you, you want. want I, I don't control you. You do what you like. Tell me what you think about Doctor Who. Oh, okay. Well, don't get me started on Doctor Who because it's, <laughs> for, for a start, it's gone on far too long. I think it was an experiment that started in like the 60s or 70s. And they're like, yeah, this is fine. Yeah, this is this is good. Like, what is his name? Was, is it? Oh, I can't remember the guy's name. Patrick? No, that was the second one. Can't remember the first <laughs> Doctor. Fuck him. Um, but he was going along quite fine. And then all of a sudden, they were like, oh, shit, this guy's not really interested anymore. Or he's already got too old when he was he's already old. very, very old. Like, we need, to, we need to mix this up a bit. But tell you what, let's do something we've never fucking done before and just replace the main character. No one will hate that, right? <laughs> Can you imagine doing that in this day and age? You just get, make someone fall in love with a, a TV character and then you take them onto the internet and all of a sudden, yeah, we're changing the main character. Can you imagine the the uproar on Twitter? There would be hashtags and petitions and all kinds of shit. That's it, man. Like, you know, I'm interested to see what they're going to do with Batwoman because she's fucking gone. But anyway, um, yeah, so don't get me started on Doctor Who because... That's just the beginning of Doctor Who. This has gone on for ages and ages and ages. And at this point, Doctor Who is basically just treading the same ground over and over again. It's like, right, we finally killed the Cybermen. Whatever, motherfucker, I don't believe you because they're going to be back next year. <laughs> Anytime with, you need With them. a slightly different shade of grey, with a slightly different antenna to make it look a little bit more like 20th century, 21st century. Yeah, fuck it. I'm. I haven't got past Matt Smith to be honest. I've. Everyone's like, oh, did you see the new Doctor Who? Like Doctor Who's a woman now. I'm like, is she? Great. I 
I'm still on Matt Smith, and I you don't really understand keep... what's going on there. So it's impossible to keep going. I mean, it's so hard to keep up with Doctor Who. Fuck Doctor Who. I used to love Doctor Who, but Mrs. Grumble says Doctor Who is the British sci- sci-fi scene trying to stay relevant, and that's another thing. Fucking Americans love Doctor Who more than we do. Like it's simulcast there on BBC America, and they're just counting down and watching it. All of a sudden, what it like? What did they, Mrs. Grumble they give say? A shit more than me. Uh, that it, Doctor Who is the British sci-fi scene trying to stay relevant. Oh boy, is it ever! Yeah, um, I mean, name another sci-fi that we produce. I can't think of one, you know. And it, by the way, there's. I I really love Jodie Whittaker. I think she's amazing. But what is going on with that latest season? I mean, not the latest season. I didn't watch that. But the, what the first season of that? There always seems to be some sort of preachy fucking episode where they're like let's teach you a lesson hey racism. i tell you what i mean and i know that you will completely disagree with this because uh like i know you don't like this guy but if there's one incentive for me to catch up and get to the newer seasons of doctor who it's bradley walsh as an assistant because i fucking love bradley walsh he's amazing oh, i don't know i don't have a problem with bradley walsh no oh, no i'm you? fine with bradley walsh oh, no okay. maybe i was someone else no i'm fine with it he's actually quite a lot of fun in that show um no he finally has saved the day and the, the British sci-fi institution that is keeping us afloat is Red Dwarf. Ah, oh, yeah. Maybe in the year 1996. Um, but I don't know that it is now. I mean, reruns are uh, all fine. Seasons, I want to say that season six was airing in 1996. Whatever was season three. I mean, the, oh, uh, the Illusions. What was the one? 93, 94. The, Backwards. Like, Horseman of- Horse backwards, Horseman of the Apocalypse, whatever that was, uh, uh, Insanity Squid, everything after that's bullshit. Um, I'm sorry, I just say, you know, I mean, there's one good episode, the Arnold Rimmer roller coaster episode was the only seven. good one in the city. Se- yeah, that's the only good one in that. Everything else can fuck off. No. Um, Pete, in <laughs> season eight. Fucking love Pete. Pete, I haven't seen it. No, I never watched anything past the Arnold, Arnold, Arnold Rimmer episode. I don't know. More reliable that than a that. garden streamer. It's a good Without episode. Him, life would be much dimmer. <laughs> it's it's Arnold, Arnold Rimmer. <laughs> oh my god. Oh yeah. But Chris Barry's a legend, so what the fuck? Um That was far too positive. It... I need to get you started again. Uh, okay, go on then. I got right. one for you, but yeah, you can you tell me, yeah. Uh I would like to know your <clears throat> Can deep... I have a drink of one first? Yeah, do it. You're gonna need it. I'd like to know oh. your deep rooted, deep seeded feelings. On podcasts. Oh my God. Don't get me started on podcasts. Number one thing about podcasts is there are billions of them. There are so many podcasts. When podcasts first came out, everyone's like, oh my God, there's some really good ones out there. But now it's like everybody in the world thinks they can do something. Everybody in the world thinks they've got something to say. And everybody in the world thinks they're funny. P.S. You're not. Just saying, okay. Um, so for a start, there's this strange kind of uh, like mutation and kind of explosion of podcasts. In fact, that's mainly it for me. I mean, also, people can't be bothered to work on their fucking audio. And when we're trying really hard, I get it, right? You go through iterations of trying to get it better. But once you've had 200 shows, your audio should be fucking sharp. Do you know when fucking, I think it was the NFL.com, a Sky Sports it was, the Sky Sports for the NFL did a podcast for the NFL. And it was like, wah, 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 wah. I'm like, who fucking checked this audio? Who's the producer on something? This is the fucking NFL. What the fuck is wrong with you? Even people like that are getting it wrong. Plus, there's only basically, I don't know, there's very few that are really any good. There's a lot of stuff out there. I mean, can you imagine how many Star Trek podcasts there are out there? Mm. I mean, this one as well. I mean, our own podcast. <laughs> oh, my God. That's the thing about these sort of things. Also, there are so many podcasts, and they all talk bollocks for so too long. Thank you very much for joining into our one, by the way. Um, yeah, don't get me started on podcasts apart from our own. Ours is amazing. You know? But there you go. Um, Mrs. Grumble says, to find some quality podcasts, you need to wade through all the dicks first, which is obviously how they're spending their Friday uh, hey. after- afternoon, I want to say, because it, it, it very much seems like they're in the States. So, Hey, listen, Mrs. Grumble, who I love, and I'm very pleased you're here, um, did you did she say define or did she say to find some to find to through? Yeah, you're right about that. You know what? There's one that I think who is it? Mark. Oh, I can't remember who the guy who does what the fuck podcast or what a WTF podcast. I like it's so well known. Um, 
but it's just kind of, I think, a bit hit and miss for me. I'll tell you that one of my favorite podcasts, two favorite podcasts, if, you're, if you could listen to a podcast, make it this one. But if you could listen to two more, I mean, listen I still love this Serial. Listen to this one twice. Listen to this one twice. Yes, that's the <laughs> joke. I love it. Listen to this one twice. But if you can listen to three and four podcasts, I can't do the joke again. I can't do it again. <laughs> listen to Serial. I know Serial's been out for a long time, but Serial is still fucking amazing. If you've never listened to Serial, listen to Serial. And I'll tell you the one I love, that I haven't listened to for ages, is my dad wrote a porno. I think it might not be doing so well now because they, once you've got to it, you've got it. But basically, some guy's dad writes a porno and they read it out. And this guy that wrote the porno has no idea about female biology. Like the terms he uses aren't things that the woman's, a woman's body has, right? So you've got to, he forgets characters partway through. The continuity is shot. It doesn't make any sense. The comparison of fruits to parts of the body it's fucking all over the place. My dad wrote my dad wrote a porno and serial are my favorite too. Do you have any good pod- podcasts? I'm mean, not saying to divert people, but let's be serious. I mean, yeah. Um, well, when we? you said you know about how there are so many like Star Trek podcasts, like the one that I really like is the uh, the Starfleet Escape podcast because oh, yeah, yeah. that's an inspired name and that's a cool one. I really like that. Um, yeah. Other than that, I just my podcasts are pretty much audio versions of tv shows that i just can't, i don't need to see the video of like yeah nfl related stuff or wrestling related stuff when i get obsessed with westworld i just listen to loads of westworld podcasts if you have a podcast that you would recommend to us i mean stick it in the comments i mean i'll yeah. probably listen to it plug it's your shit community. we don't give a shit plug it do you want me to get you started on something do it okay this is someone thing i think you like so this is going to be more fun for me anyway Tell me, enlighten us, as you'll want to say, on what you think of the TV program House. Mm. <clears throat> okay, don't get me started on House, because, first of all, it has nothing to do with houses. I tuned in <laughs> expecting something like Homes Under the Hammer or like <laughs> some kind of property-based show, but that, that you just got Hugh Laurie pretending to be an American being a dickhead like hitting people with his cane and like saving people's lives and shit i'm like well for a start there's a wall over there that really could do with being knocked through and they turn this part of the hospital into a a larger kind of room where hugh laurie sits and watches tv and bounces his tennis ball off the wall instead of doing his work but really yeah yeah oh man Um, i've never watched this show and the thing about it is is it's basically csi but with medical shit. But it always comes round to every time they're like, do you think it's lupus? I'm like, fuck me, mate. I've only watched two episodes of this and it's never lupus. Like, give up on the lupus <laughs> thing. And if we could just focus... Lupus happen. A, <laughs> if we could just focus a little bit more on the house element of it rather than the medical element of it, I would be a lot happier with, with house. Would you be happier if House didn't? If House left, if, if like the start of every episode of House was him leaving the hospital and just going and living his life and just going to the bar or something like that, would that amuse you? I I think it would be better if he uh, kind of turned it into a bit like an episode of Through the Keyhole, where he just went and <laughs> looked at other people's houses. It's the same character who doesn't take any shit and is sarcastic, but he just goes around to people's houses as they try and tell him the good things about their house. And his, he just rips the shit out of them for their shitty houses. Maybe, That's maybe what you could house look inside people. Maybe you could look inside people's bodies, and it could be like through the keyhole surgery. See, you put just combine the two. It's very right. Co video anyway. killed the radio star. Don't steal this idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you know, it's. I think it's hard when you like these things. Um, I was never a big fan. Mind you, I've been watching shitloads of Grey's Anatomy, so, you know, fuck me, but I guess. Um, that was, we weren't as ranty as we might have been. Maybe we picked subjects that we weren't, didn't want to be as ranty about. Who knows? Hey, wait, have I got one left to go? No, no. no. I've, I've given you your two. I've ranted you twice. God, too much. Okay. Um, I think people should suggest different subjects for us to rant about. Mind you, if you put something in the comments, it's pretty... If you say Voyager, that's what happens. We fucking rant about it. We uh, don't. But... Voyager was the immediate suggestion as you were explaining <laughs> how this works. 
fuck voyager man <laughs> i mean honestly what a fuck i can't i can't do it to you man i just like i know you like it hey do voyager it has as, long to go as, ahead. as long as i get a rebuttal you go right ahead no i don't want to do it but like i mean i yeah i do want to fucking rant like i just feel like off the heels of deep space nine which had it's almost like they had all the best writers all the best ideas all the best actors and then they went let's make voyager and then they employed substandard actors substandard script writers send them off into the middle of nowhere and then just kind of like left them there and i just never i just can never get on board i couldn't get in there's nobody in voyager i like i can't i don't like paris i don't like neelix i don't like neelix's girlfriend i don't like janeway chicote Alana torres I don't like, um, I mean, I can't even believe I remember their fucking names. I like the doctor, the holographic See, doctor. I feel, like you, I feel like you kind of missed the point then with Voyager. Because, you know, you've, oh. had, you've had TNG run its course. And that was the, you know, the, the continuation of the mission, exploring strange new worlds, all that kind of stuff. But mm-hmm. they covered a lot of ground between the original series and TNG. And even... DS9 to a certain extent, they got to the that kind of corner of the Alpha Quadrant. So the Alpha Quadrant was done. We were all good with yeah. that. The Gamma Quadrant, they discovered in DS9, was full of pricks, yeah. and they didn't want anything <laughs> to fucking do with that. And so, although the kind of premise of Voyager was dump them off in in the middle of nowhere and leave them to it, and make just, them come back. Yeah, it just became an explorer show, like. We're not going to send you on an exploring mission because that's that would be bullshit at this point. We know what what everything is in in reach of us. So yeah, fuck it. You're you're left in the middle of nowhere and you have to explore your way back. Take that, motherfuckers. It, but it sounds so exciting. But why was it not? I just I, I got to season two and I just couldn't do any more. But I tell you, maybe the problem was. I mean, I'm not against. Oh my through gritted teeth i say i'm not against maybe watching it and seeing whether i should give another go because i mean still love star trek maybe that's i mean maybe that's a podcast a live kind of we watch an episode of voyager (laughs) and and just comment along to people would people like that because i definitely do that but people um, would love that i think yeah oh my god i'd love to watch that i mean i think i just got into babylon 5 and never looked back um well uh, there's a comment about the use of cgi in voyager and it was especially for the mid 90s it was absolutely like spot on i really like, yeah well, I like, mean... I, i've recently only a couple of weeks ago finished doing a complete rewatch of voyager and even now in 2020 when the world is falling apart around us i felt that the cgi was pretty seamless and i it didn't kind of jar me as if as if to say that's not real like when I'm watching no. it. Whereas with Babylon 5, I'm like, oh, fuck, who turned on the PS1? <laughs> Do you know what? I mean, I don't care like, about that. You need to, not, so you need to not get me started on Babylon 5 because I I have watched I a couple of those with you. And yeah, I'm, I'm, Mate, not so, I'm not so enamored so far. I, really, I, I, am, I, wanna... I do want to watch more because I, I want you to feel watch like more. I can't completely rip the shit out of something that I haven't seen. So I want to watch it so that I can take the piss out of it. That sounds fair. Listen. Yeah. No, I mean, I want you to watch it. I'd come around to your house in the garden and watch it with you indefinitely. Get Duncan on the buzz. But like, I think is I want there to be a time when we've watched a bit of Babylon 5 and it's gone a bit far. I want to hear the words from you. Oh my God. Babylon 5 is genius. That's the words i want to hear from you that's the words i want to hear from you i might not ever hear those words um but that's my well, <laughs> that's my if, aim I, if it's genius i'll say it's genius you know i know you will i know you I, will. I maybe pretty feels, straight. i know i know hey listen mate i know you do i don't know if you would say it today with the knowledge and understanding of story and development that we have now i don't know maybe you would i think it's brilliant i think it's brilliant don't watch season five but um uh <laughs> I don't think I I don't think I've even watched season five anyway. So yes. Well, who knows? Maybe there's us watching Voyager in our future. Now we've done Don't Get Me Started and we're kind of man, we've run over time a little bit, haven't we? we Is have, there anything yeah. you want to talk? Do you want you want to call I it a halt or do you want to just like I think we're probably good at this point for our, our special right. Friday, possibly our Edition. new regular day 
edition hey, I like of Fridays. the podcast. Yeah, Friday works. We'll see how we go. Get you to Belgium, you see what commented. life's like for you. Get me to Belgium. Um, thanks very much for chiming in, all the wonderful comments, especially if it's something to do with sci-fi. What If you want something said, all you have to do is comment. We'll discuss it, literally. Um, it, like, it literally co- comes up on the screen with, without any kind of filter in between. So whatever you say comes up, and if we like it, we discuss it. Yeah. If not, we ignore it. But everyone else saw it because it's live on the stream. Yeah. It's happening. This is a new way. There. This is the future. Mm-hmm. Can they watch this again, though? Is that a thing? Can we possibly watch it? Can they ever see it back? Will this, or is this Ab- gone No, forever? absolutely, they they can. So on certain platforms, depending on where you watched, uh, as soon as we are off air, there will be a replay there for you. Uh, Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitter, it will hang around. Uh, I think it stays on Twitch and Mixer for a couple of weeks and then gets deleted because it's a more gaming type platform anyway yeah sure uh we are also uh this is actually a podcast that was the point of this so uh the audio goes live pretty much straight away now that we've got this new system set up i can yoink the audio put it up and the podcast will be up ready for your morning commute in the morning if you are a person that works um in which case sucker but (laughs) <laughs> yeah watch it wherever you can subscribe can, just... wherever you're watching so that you know when we're we're coming i, I think I, by we've the way, got a new fan in in mrs grumbles the third mrs who, grumbles the third um needs I've more just, british I've just, accents in their life that's apparently. what i've just read i've um i've uh i just expanded our thing on facebook because i can see it now i need more british accents in my life well, listen. There's no more, much more British accent than my British accent. I can tell you that. Um, so, if you want more British accents, this one's coming your way on a regular fucking basis. P.S. I hope you like the swearing. Um, <laughs> have you got anything else to say, or should we just say goodbye and say we'll see you next week? We should say goodbye and uh... just say thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time.